Here on Makers Muse, we are all about empowering creativity through technology, and I strongly believe one of the best ways of achieving that is to learn CAD or computer-aided design. By designing your own three-dimensional models, you can then 3D print them, get them CNC manufactured, or a myriad of other processes to turn your idea into tangible reality. But one complaint I hear all the time is, well, Angus, don't I need a really powerful computer to run CAD software? And yeah, back in the day, you absolutely did. You needed a powerful workstation with a fast processor, tons of memory, and a Quadro graphics card thrown in for good measure. But that is no longer the case. There are powerful programs that run on the cloud on pretty much any device. And to prove it, in this video, I'm gonna try using the cheapest Chromebook I could find to design a combat robot for an upcoming competition. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So in this video, we're going to be using Onshape. Onshape's been around for quite a while now, and it is a CAD program that runs on the cloud. That means that it offloads almost all the computational requirements to their remote servers, and essentially you're just working on a dumb device over the internet to use a powerful CAD package, instead of all of that processing being done natively, which of course would require much more powerful hardware. Earlier this year, I was wandering around JB Hi-Fi here in Australia, and I came across this cute little notebook. This is a Chromebook from Lenovo, and I paid $200 Australian for it. This beast of a computer boasts an Intel 4500 dual core processor running at a max of 2.8 gigahertz. It has four gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage and an absolutely pathetic 1366 by 768 pixel TN display. And all of that hardware is wrapped up in this cheap plastic enclosure. And I'm not going to lie, this is a pretty terrible device. The viewing angles of the screen are terrible, the resolution is very, very subpar, and the keyboard is mushy and not very enjoyable to use. But you know what? I love the fact that this costs next to nothing. I use this little thing all the time when I'm on the go, when I want to write scripts, answer emails, watch some YouTube videos, or listen to music. But using this for 3D modeling, yeah, I'm not too sure about that. To test out its capabilities, I'll be designing a simple and weight robot for an upcoming event here in New South Wales. I always recommend before you do any 3D modeling to grab a pen and paper and really flesh out the design. And this is what I came up with. It's a simple horizontal spinner and I'm really going for something with a lot of offense and very little defense. It's very tombstone-esque and I think it's gonna be a simple design to test out the CAD capabilities of this Chromebook. So without further ado, let's start CADing. Now my day-to-day -day CAD program is actually Autodesk Fusion. I've been using that for a very, very long time. So I've got a lot of muscle memory for the hotkeys and the way I navigate that software. And there's a lot of conflicts with me getting into Onshape the first time to try to sort of override that muscle memory. Like I was scrolling in and out the wrong direction. But even though I haven't used Onshape for a very long time, it didn't take me long to navigate through the process and design up a basic chassis. But I will say, the biggest issue I ran into was the screen's resolution. This Chromebook only has an HD resolution. It's not full HD, it's not ultra HD, and Onshape is responsive like most websites, but when you scale it down to that HD resolution, it was actually cutting off a lot of menus. So there was lots of functionality that actually was hidden from me that I had to click through and search for tutorials to be like, okay, it's actually meant to be here and either scroll through or find it through another navigation method. And also even though Onshape is a cloud program, it still needs to display the graphics natively. And this little thing 
is so gutless that it would still stagger and stutter sometimes just doing that one task. In fact, it actually stutters with YouTube as well sometimes. But all that aside, after a couple of distractions with the cats, I was able to finish my first pass and we are ready to send it to the printer for prototyping. And that's where we run into our next problem. How do we slice the damn thing? That's because Chromebooks don't run Windows. Chromebooks run their own operating system, Chrome OS. It's not Windows, it's not iOS. It's actually closer essentially to Android than anything else. And as far as I'm aware, there's no slices for Android or Chrome OS, but there's lots of slices for Linux. And it turns out there's a compatibility layer you can enable through as a, like a developer mode to run Linux based software on Chromebooks. The issue is it's terrible. <laughs> I went through great lengths to get Prusa Slicer installed on this Chromebook using the developer enabled Linux uh, compatibility layer, I believe. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but it is really, really gutless. You can see how laggy it is. The slicing is very, very slow. I'd imagine on a complex object, it could take 10 minutes more or more, and it is really not an enjoyable experience. And again, that screen resolution really makes this difficult to use. So like the CAD, if you can't slice natively, you might need to slice on the cloud. And Prusa has recently released a cloud-based slicer for their printers and others. It's very, very basic, but much like Onshape, you can just drag your file in, change settings, and it will then slice on their server backends and then give you the file to either send directly or download the G code to then send to your printer. And there are other cloud-based slices like 3D Printer OS, which is a fully featured cloud slicing suite. But for the printer I'm testing, the Prusa Core 1, it was easy to just use their cloud slicer and send it for this test. Obviously settings are very limited, but so far so good. I'm actually quite impressed with the print quality and experience using the Core 1. And this was a result. So this proves that you can use a cheapest chips Chromebook using a cloud-based CAD program like Onshape to design and 3D print things. But was it a good experience? No, <laughs> it was so painful. But does that invalidate this entire video and be like, okay, you do need a powerful, expensive computer to do CAD work? Well, no, because I've got a backup and that is this. This bad boy is my old Dell Inspiron 15 7000. I bought this back in 2016. This laptop is nine years old now, but it has a full HD screen. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. But the main selling point of this is the fact it can run Windows 10 and I'm pretty sure it'd be able to run Windows 11 as well. So that means we can combine the best of both worlds. I can use this laptop with Onshape and it works so much smoother than using the Chromebook, mostly because of the larger full HD screen lets me see everything. And I was able to very, very quickly and easily update my design to add a few extra details and features in Onshape. Then I could download to the computer. And then on this laptop, I can install the latest Prusa slicer and it works totally fine, slices fairly quickly. And then from there, I can go to the printer. And secondhand laptops of this caliber of this age are really cheap online secondhand. I actually found on Facebook, the model that came after mine with a 1050 Ti graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD plus the terabyte, one terabyte hard drive for $400 Australian. And you probably could get that down lower if you negotiate. Learning to design your own things using CAD is difficult. I totally understand. I was 15 when I first started learning 3D modeling with Rhino 3D. And since then I've gotten better and better and better, but I still learn new things every day using the CAD programs that I use, like Fusion, for example. There's so many things in that software suite that I don't even know how to use and I'm getting better every day. It takes a long time, but I'll be the first to admit that when things are difficult, you want to look for an easy way out. And the easy way out often is, oh, I need to just buy something to make this thing easier. And I'll give you a personal example. When I was studying industrial design, a large part of that was to do hand rendering of design concepts. That is sketching the design concept and then rendering with markers or pencil, whatever you like to make something look good, look three dimensional with reflections and that sort of thing. I was terrible at it. I was so bad at it in fact that I basically failed the class it was in. And to get better, I thought, well, I just need more markers. So I was buying Copic markers to try to get better. 
Which in my head was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to buy another marker. I'll get better and get better. And at the end of the day, I'm like, this isn't going to make me any better. I just have all these expensive markers. What's going to make me better is just drawing more. And the fact is, I didn't like the drawings. That's why I wasn't doing it. It's just why I wasn't getting better. And CAD design is the same. You need to want to create something to persevere through the pain of learning these programs to design things and you'll get better each time. Desiring a expensive workstation just to learn CAD is not the way to go. I highly recommend if you want to learn 3D modeling and you're on a tight budget, buy a secondhand laptop. Again, the Inspiron uh, Dell laptop that I have, that would work fine. Bronze shape and slicing even now in 2025. Learn how to do it and then upgrade your gear over time. And if you want to know more about the robot I designed in this video, then stay tuned because next week I'll be going over its design and construction using low cost components and repurposed materials. Catch you later guys, bye.